Zealand have wrapped up their first innings for 249 runs. I have Ian Bishop alongside me. Do you think the Kiwis will be happy with this number? Uh, they'd have wanted more, but 32 run lead, you probably have to ask, what I always did as a bowler was ask myself, how much is it worth in terms of wickets of the opposition? So New Zealand will be saying, if we can nip out, let's say one or two, before India get wiped this lead off, it's worth something because we assume it won't be easy chasing a significant total batting last year. It's a day that started slightly slow and then picked up pace as Ishan Sharma and Mohamed Shami uh, took apart that New Zealand uh, batting lineup. When you talk about Mohamed Shami specifically, what has he done right today? He's bowled fuller. Shami is bowled fuller. They've talked about it somehow uh, because when, we, when Michael Afton spoke to Ajinka Rahane before play started today, he asked him specifically if there's something Shami could do and Ajinka Rahane said he's got to find the right length. Maybe he has to bowl fuller. So there has been some talk in the dressing room overnight and Shami has made his own luck. Four wickets in a test match in England where he struggled before. So it's good. Um, the first session, as you rightly alluded to, it was attritional. There was some really good bowling mm -hmm. and the batsman Kane Williamson himself had to be at his best to keep it out. Now it's New Zealand versus India, Virat Kohli versus uh, Kane Williamson, both of them with 40 plus scores. They took their time with it, faced over 100 deliveries. If you had to compare the two innings, how would you do so? I think I'd compare the good things because somehow I, I, I don't know if young people watching Virat bat in the first innings and watching Kane bat here with only scores in the 40s, they'll say, oh, that's nothing. But I don't know if you can appreciate the technical excellence, the judgment shown for long periods. They were slow innings. It would have been Kane's slowest 50. Virat took a long time, but they had to be watchful on a challenging pitch, leave the ball a lot, and show good judgment. So yes, it's 40-yard and 40-yard. But boy, the skill of the bowlers here was something to behold. That's, that's test cricket. T20 cricket is all about batsmen testing bowlers. This is bowlers testing batsmen. Great. Absolutely. Thank you so much for talking to us. The Indian batsmen will take to the field in a short while. For now, we have one more session to go and we'll see you at the end of day's play. It is day four of the ultimate test, the final of the inaugural edition of the World Test Championship being played between India and New Zealand. We have a little bit of rain at the moment and Ian Bishop joins us. We've lost a few overs due to rain. Which team do you think, if at all, would benefit from this? Uh, it's a tough one but because we've got a reserve day and that's six day and we're going to go into that and potentially use up all of it because we lost the first day to rain today. I have looks as though we'll struggle to get on the park as well. I'm not sure whether it, it favours anyone because New Zealand are still over 100 behind. Um, and if, it, if there's one thing that will happen because of this, I think, the covering of the pits will retain or add some moisture for when the covers are taken off, whenever we begin play again. So it'll favor, I think, the seam bowlers. All right, and when you talk about the quality of cricket we've seen over the last two days, if you had to rate it, worthy of a World Test Championship final? Yeah, I think, I, I think the sample size is small. Let, let's say that first of all. I thought Kohli and Rahane on what was, in all intents and purposes, the second day, the f second day's play in this match was a good partnership because the ball did a lot. So we saw some good batting and then New Zealand struck back on day three, taking seven wickets for, for just over 70 runs. And we saw more control from their seam bowlers. So I think we saw some good bowling, we saw some good leaving in testing conditions, but I still think we need to see a lot more for it to be the spectacle that we hope this World Test Championship final will be. Talking specifically about the action that we saw yesterday, two heroes for the New Zealand side were Kyle Jameson and Devin Conway. Mm -hmm. Now Kyle Jameson, a ball, bowler not unlike you, very tall, strong, and um, he's also a thinking bowler, very accurate. Uh, what do you think uh, he's done to take two test cricket so well? To, to be honest, and I've had a lot of interaction over social media, um, even from last year when Jameson was wrecking the West Indies in New Zealand and Pakistan, people were saying, well, it's only a second test match away from home, this one. But he's got five five-wicket hauls. So the talk is he's bowled in fairly helpful conditions at home in New Zealand and two test matches here in England. And I think that's fair, but I'm looking beyond the numbers and I'm looking at 
six foot eight. I look up to him. Mm -hmm. Very few people in the world I look up to. He's one of them. He's got great skills in swinger, out swinger for a tall guy. Usually the tall guy back pitches the ball. He can do that, but he can also pitch the ball further up as we saw with Virat and Rishabh Pant yeah. and get the ball to swing. So he's got skills. He will find it harder when he goes to subcontinent and the West Indies. The ball won't do as much, but I think he will be a good bowler once he can stay fit. All right. We've got some fan questions coming in. Ah. It's a fairly rainy Ooh. morning, so we thought we'll get our fans involved as well. Amar Ahmad asks, is the option of bowling a slower ball often overlooked by Pacers in Test cricket? 100%. I totally agree with him. I've had that discussion with a couple of the West Indian guys and one or two others over time. So let, let's assume that you're playing on the subcontinent and it's the back end of a Test match and the pitch is drying off. I see no reason why guys can't use the slow ball that they use so well in white ball cricket to deceive batsmen on the drive once the pitch starts to hold. So I think it's underutilized in this form of the game. All right. The cricketist asks, we saw New Zealand bowlers extra extracted a lot of swing while they were bowling, whereas the Indian bowlers were not really able to swing the ball. What do you think is the reason? Uh, can, I, can I be totally honest here? Absolutely. It surprised me yesterday that India did not get the ball to do more than it did. Because I've seen Jasprit Boomer, I've seen Ashant, uh, I've seen Shami wreck havoc with orthodox swing and reverse swing. So I know that though they, you wouldn't consider them swing bowlers, mm -hmm. they can swing the ball. So I'd have to say in those conditions yesterday, I expected the ball to do much more for them. So mm -hmm. sometimes you get a ball that just does not obey the commands of the bowlers mm -hmm. and I think that's what happened yesterday that ball just would not swing get it hit out of the park get rid of it and try a new ball all right and we've got one more question coming in from Kostav Das Gupta he asks if the World Test Championship happened during the 80s then which two teams do you think would have qualified for the final West Indies <laughs> um, West Indies and at one point and I sort of only played at the back end of, of the 80s, right? But the great West Indies team were playing from 80 to or 79 to, to 89, 90. So I would think at times Pakistan, we considered our toughest opponent or sometimes Australia. But the West Indies would be in there. Uh, the one thing I, want, I, I hope I'm allowed to say is that down the road, mm -hmm. I'm praying that a World Test Championship final will be a final series rather mm -hmm. than just one game. Because when you get interruptions like this, mm -hmm. it puts a dampener on a one game series. So True. I want to see, I'd love to see two or three games. All right. And between the West Indies and Pakistan, who do you think could have won? Oh, West Indies, <laughs> definitely. L listen, <laughs> listen, don't shout at me. Check the records from. 1980-81 to around the early 90s, West Indies did not lose a single Test Match series. That is unparalleled in the history of Test Match cricket. So undoubtedly, before rankings, before World Test Championship finals, the West Indies were the, not disputed, undisputed champions of Test Match cricket. Awesome. That would have been quite a final. Thank you so much for talking to us. It is a rainy morning here in Southampton, but we hope to get play underway very, very soon. We will continue to bring you updates through the day, so stick around. And we've got one more question coming in from Kostav Das Gupta. He asks, if the World Test Championship happened during the 80s, then which two teams do you think would have qualified for the final? West Indies. <laughs> um, West Indies, and at one point, and I sort of only played at the back end of, of the 80s, right? But the great West Indies team were playing from 80 to or 79 to, to 89, 90. So I would think at times Pakistan, we considered our toughest opponent or sometimes Australia. But the West Indies would be in there. All right. And between the West Indies and Pakistan, who do you think would have won? Oh, West Indies, <laughs> definitely. L listen, <laughs> listen. Don't shout at me. Check the records from... 1980-81 to around the early 90s, West Indies did not lose a single Test Match series. That is unparalleled in the history of Test Match cricket. So undoubtedly, before rankings, before World Test Championship finals, the West Indies were the, not disputed, undisputed champions of Test Match cricket. All right, we are
are at T. We've got to go before we have a world champion in Test cricket. New Zealand have a target of 139 runs and at T joining us is Ian Bishop. Now, when you talk about the New Zealand fast bowlers, they've seemed to hunt in a pack through this match. Every time Kane Williamson's wanted a breakthrough, he's not had to look too far. It, it's a wonderful attack. It's the best fast bowling attack New Zealand have ever had. I, I know they've had Sir Richard Hadley. I, I know they've had Shane Bond and all of that. But if you talk about as a collective, Salvi, 300 test match wickets, both nearly 300. Jameson, superstar on his rise. Wagner, in the last three, four years, brilliant. So there's no release for a batting unit, not in these conditions anyway. They're too good. Williamson can throw any combination, and they don't necessarily often let him down. What, according to you, makes them work so well as a unit together? Again, condition-specific. I'm, I'm being straight up with that. They're better like most of us in some conditions compared to others. Salvi swings the ball. He's got skills. He's developed other variations over the years. So sometimes he can take the pitch out of the equation. Trent Bolt, although not at his absolute pump and best, but still good enough to get swing as well. And then Wagner's now doing the two. He bowls short as he did against Jadeja. He's relentless. And then he's gone back to a skill early in his career that he had where he pitches it up and swings it. And then Jameson, the brilliant thing about Jameson today was he wasn't getting as much swing as he was in the first inning, so he pulled his length back, operated from just short of a good length, and only occasionally went closer to Virat and company. So I think he's fast becoming a, a real problematic bowler for batsmen. We've seen four days of spectacular cricket into uh, heading into this ultimate day. What did you think of uh, Kane Williamson's captaincy, particularly today on this ultimate day of the final? It was summed up, Williamson's captaincy was summed up when Shami was batting. Shami had a go, at, I think at Salvi, and it skied over the slip and ran away. And immediately, Williamson got together with Salvi, who's been a limited overs captain, and Tom Latham, who's captain New Zealand in test matches before, and they put a fly slip in. And immediately next ball, it went there. And that sums up Williamson. He's patient. He can be a little conservative, but he understands the strength of his bowlers and he knows this game as good and as well as any other. So I think he's been solid, is the word. A reasonably small target, a world championship at the end of the game. If you were part of that Indian dressing room, what would you be telling that fast bowling unit? The Shami over before T, where he was just full enough to draw the shot in, but not full enough to drive is the length that I want Ishant and Jaspreet and Shami to continue bowling. The, the challenge is you don't have too much to defend. And so you, you, you have to stay away. I've been in that position where you're trying to bowl magic deliveries, but they can only control what they can control. Focus on that wonderful length Shami has bowled in this match. And I hope, I do hope when the, looking ahead, test series against England that Shami remembers this length and carries it forward. Such is the beauty of Test Cricket that we're down to the last session mm -hmm. of this match and still we've got three results that are totally possible. If you had to rate the three results, um, what would you say? Give them a rating out of 10. 10 being the highest? The highest. Uh, who, who would go forward and, and have the result? New Zealand are in the driver's seat, so I'd say they're uh, an 8.5. Mm -hmm. um, the draw is out of the window for me. draw is at 0. Mm -hmm. um, and India's chance really would... I want to see how Ashwin and Jadeja can go on this surface. Um, I'd say it's perhaps at a three and a half. It's not impossible, mm -hmm. but it's unlikely. Ian Bishop said that at T. Forget those words. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for talking to us. It is still anybody's game. We will see you at the end of this session when we have a world champion of Test Cricket. For now, thank you for watching.